Hello, everybody. Hello. Thank you so much for joining us today here at the Shrine uh, for our Lenten series um, and, and for Holy Mass. So thank you so, so much. For those of you who might not know me, my name is Sister Piper Clatt. I am a member of the Sisters of Jesus' Merciful Passion. And today I am here to speak with all of you about fasting and feasting during Lent. So why do we do the three practices of Lent? Okay, this is what, what this series is kind of all about. Why do we pray? Why do we fast? Why do we give alms? And what's the importance of spending time at the feet of Jesus? So back in the day, I used to know someone who tended to treat Lent as kind of a type of New Year's resolution redo. And when I say that I used to know someone, I'm actually talking about myself, okay? On January 1st, you could find me giving up carbs, okay, and walking on the treadmill at the YMCA. But by February 2nd, or February 1st, the next month, my shoes were already, you know, gaining dust from not being used very often, and I was back to eating buttered toast. And I would just say to myself, well, you know what, Lent is not that far off. I'll just, you know, I'll start back up on Ash Wednesday. And I knew that as a Catholic, I was supposed to fast on Ash Wednesday and Good Friday, and then fast from meat every Friday, but I truly didn't understand why we did those things other than the fact that that's just what Catholics do, right, during Lent. For many years, I saw Lent as just a time to kick some bad eating habits. But it's so much more than that, okay? So ultimately, fasting during Lent is not because we're trying to only start some good habits or kick some bad habits. Although inherently these things are are good, uh, good things to do, the true purpose of fasting is that it prepares within us the ability to live virtuously in all aspects of life and kind of makes room in our hearts, right? Remember last year's theme, to make room in your heart for God? By fasting from certain things, we make room for God in our hearts so that he can have access to our hearts. And kind of what Father was just talking about from the gospel today, to teach us how to love because that's inherently what we're made for. But you know, so we're all sinners. So when it comes to repentance and conversion, it's great and it's so necessary to ask for forgiveness from the Lord, but we're also called to live out that forgiveness. And we can do that by giving certain things up, by fasting for them. But why fast from food? You know, that was a question that I had for many, many years. And it's important to note that fasting is not just limited to food, okay? More on that in just a minute. But what comes to my mind are the words that Jesus answered St. John the Baptist's disciples when they came to him and they asked, you know, why do your disciples not fast? Remember that from the gospel? Jesus answered them, Can the wedding guests mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? The day will come indeed when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast. That's from uh, the Gospel of Matthew. I read that Pope, John, Pope St. John Paul II said that this time of Lent reminds us that the bridegroom has been taken away from us. Right? Holy Week reminds us that he's been taken away. He's been arrested, scourged, crowned with thorns, and crucified. Um, and he said, Pope St. John Paul, I, just, I love him so much, he said, fasting during the time of Lent is the expression of our repentance and solidarity with Christ. Okay, so two, two good reasons right there why we fast from food, right? From, uh, it's our expression of our repentance and that word expression uh, and our solidarity with Jesus. But something else that he said that I just, I wanted to mention because it kind of, it, it hit me like a ton of bricks. Um, and, I'll, and I'll read it slow because it's kind of philosophical. He was so smart and such a deep thinker. But he said that the answer to the question, why do we fast, would not be complete if we do not realize that man is himself because he succeeds in depriving himself of something. Because he is capable of saying no to himself. So what's he trying to say here? It's deep, but it's really good. He says that man by his very nature is the only creature that God created with the ability to reason, to rationalize, and to have free will. Right? We're the only uh, one of God's creations who are able to see something good, to see something evil, 
to know the difference between the two and then uh, through reason, through rationalizing, we can make a decision to choose one or the other. That's specifically what makes us different from animals. Uh, we have the ability to rationalize and have our free will. And so when we're able to say no or fast from certain things in order to give God the ability to work in us and to grow closer to him, especially in difficult times, we actually become more human. That's what Pope St. John Paul II is saying. We become more human because we are practicing self-control over our natural instincts, appetites, and desires. Thus we grow in virtue. And we are truly free because of this. We're truly free. We live in a world where instant gratification and more is never enough. Fasting and self-denial are actually so countercultural to people these days uh, who have this mindset. But if we sit and we think about it for a little bit, the truth is if we're unable to say no to our desires, whether that is food or, or, or something else, TV, your phone, if we're unable to say no and you know, we give in to temptation at the drop of a hat, we're actually, we're actually not free. And we've kind of become that slave to sin. And the temporary satisfaction that comes with that, it, it just it blinds us from the fact that we're just made for so much more. Father gave a fantastic homily today and kind of, you know, dropped the mic with the fact that God made us for love and for himself. And when we can't say no to these certain desires or we just give in to them right away because of, you know, the society we live in, we can have anything we want basically at least within the next day, right? But this kind of stuff, it blinds us from the fact that we're made. We're made for heaven, okay? But the good news of the gospel is that if, if this describes you, if you're, trying, if you're finding yourself unable to say no to certain sins or break some habitual <laughs> habits that might be um, harming you in, in some way or others, just as it did for me, you know, in my lifetime prior to entering, and sometimes still today, then have courage and find hope in the fact that you're exactly the person that Jesus came for and died for and came to save. I remember the night that I realized this, and I had just, I'd come to my wit's end and had enough of being enslaved by the certain habitual sins that I was uh, enslaved by and, and certain addictions, and I was just, I was so desperate for God and for his help that all I could do that night was just call out on the name of Jesus for help. And I only bring this up because it was at that moment that everything changed for me. And I just knew that he heard my cry, but I also knew, I just had the sense in my heart that he was saying, I love you far too much to let you remain the way that you are. And that's, I mean, we're all called to holiness. He, that, what Father was saying today is God loves us so much and we're called to love him. But whenever we sin, whatever, whatever that is to us, we're turning away from him. Okay? But he loves us too much to let us stay that way. And from that day on, I had a lot of practice from fasting for many different, different things. And let me tell you, I, I struggled. Still to this day, it, it will be something that, you know, takes a whole lifetime to grow in. It doesn't just go away like that. But God just asks that you try. Because here's the thing about fasting from certain things, whether it's food or TV or your phone, growing in virtue is kind of like working out. I, I, I heard this kind of metaphor of virtue, and I thought it was so good because at first when you choose to begin, it can be really, really hard right, and uncomfortable. And at times you might be walking on the treadmill just like feeling like this is just, is this pain and suffering even worth it to be here trying to get fit, right? However, over time, you know, it starts to get a little easier. So each day you push yourself a little further, maybe walk a little faster on the treadmill or lift a little bit heavier weights, and you realize that the same workouts that you were doing months ago that had you feeling like you were dying, they're getting a little easier. As a matter of fact, they're like a walk in the park. That's kind of like what growing in virtue is like, okay? Your physical strength is growing when you work out, but when God gives you the opportunity to grow in virtue, you're growing in spiritual strength. And at first it can be really uncomfortable and not easy. 
because it goes against our human nature, which is broken, right? But over time, uh, you will grow in it. So have hope and courage if you are in that place of like, I don't know if I can kick this or grow in this specific virtue. If you ask for God to give you the grace, he will. But just remember too, it's not like uh, he just kind of, you know, sprinkles that grace on you and all of a sudden you're amazing at being patient. You know, that's not, that's not really how it works. What he does do though is he gives you many opportunities throughout your day to practice these virtues and to grow in them. And so it does not take physical strength to become holy, but each and every one of us has that call that God placed on our heart, that universal call to holiness. And this does require a desire for spiritual growth. And as I was saying earlier, fasting for food is just one of the many ways that you can fast. And there's this beautiful Lenten poem, I don't know if you guys remember it, but it's from two years ago that we actually read here, it's called The Fast Life. And it was the basis of our theme two years ago. I'm going to read it again because I think that it's something that each Lent uh, we could always get something from. Um, and so I'm just going to read it here, it's called The Fast Life. Fast from judging others and feast on Christ dwelling in them. Fast from fear of illness and feast on the healing power of God. Fast from words that pollute and feast on speech that purifies. Fast from discontent and feast on gratitude. Fast from anger, feast on patience. Fast from pessimism, feast on hope. Fast from negatives and feast on encouragement. Fast from bitterness and feast on forgiveness. Fast from self-concern and feast on compassion. Fast from suspicion and feast on truth. Fast from gossip, feast on purposeful silence. Fast from problems that overwhelm, feast on prayer that sustains. Fast from anxiety and feast on faith. So I just think that that poem is so beautiful. It gives us so many different ways in which we can fast this Lent and feast on, on things that will, will raise us up, will help us grow in spiritual growth. But as I was praying about how to tie in fasting with the theme of this, this Lenten series, At His Feet, there were many different directions I could have gone, um, but I'm thankful for Mother Catherine for kind of uh, guiding me uh, in the way of I just kind of kept coming back to the image of the woman caught, caught in adultery at the feet of Jesus. And we know the story. The people were getting ready to stone her for her sins, but Je Jesus intervened saying, let him who is without sin cast the first stone. And one by one, they just dropped the rocks at the feet of Jesus and walked away. <clears throat> All of us, in one way or another, are like these people. We have our stones in hand, ready to metaphorically curl them at someone else in the form of harsh words of judgment or bitterness or anger, or even ready to hurt ourselves with them, right? Sometimes we could be our own worst enemy. But I like to think that these people's short encounter with Jesus was life-changing, and that those few moments they realized that they were indeed sinners, they weren't without sin, and they just had to lay down those rocks at his feet. So I was inspired to create a takeaway that can kind of double as a daily reflection for the remainder of the Lenten season for you all. Um, Mother Catherine had mentioned briefly once a couple months ago, why don't we have a walk as a takeaway? Um, and I just, it kept coming back to me. And so what I did was I had written the key words from each verse of the Fast Life poem on each side of the rock. Um, the words that we should, we could try to work on fasting from are in red. And then on the other side, I use a bunch of different fun colors to write uh, those things in which we can feast on and work on in this Lenten season. Uh, so that uh, if you are interested and you would like, uh, we'll be having prayer ministry for healing in just a moment here. I was thinking maybe after you come up to receive healing, um, the rocks are here on display in a little basket. Um, we do ask for a you know suggested donation of $1. I mean, I did 
I did purchase the rocks, and I know that's probably a sin to purchase a rock that you can find outside. However, <laughs> these ones are the nice, smooth ones that are easy to paint on, and, and they will look nice in any of your you know, pots at home or in your garden or anywhere that you can kind of glance at throughout the day and just ask the Lord to kind of help you grow in, in this area because we all need growth. So um, I just ask that if you are interested, please help yourself. There's a bunch of different rocks there to choose from. Um, but I just ask that, you know, God reveals to you in which ways that you're able to feast on these virtues this Lenten season and fast from certain things that may be harmful to us. And just to lay them down at his feet. Because at the end of the day, um, God just wants your heart. He just wants your love. He wants you to make room so that he can work through you to other people to be his hands and feet. And at the end of the day, just wants you to join him in the great banquet feast in heaven. So, thank you so much. God bless you abundantly for joining us today. Uh, and I think that at this time we can pray the chaplet and have Divine Mercy, uh, Divine Mercy Chaplet.